much. And to echo what Kevin said, you all deserve to give yourselves a big pat on the back for passing those constitutional amendments today. Because, go ahead, give yourselves a pat on the back, all of you. It is so important that our party represent this entire province. And remember this today. It is BC Liberals that have chosen to represent their entire province in this leadership campaign. New Democrats have not. But since when did the New Democrats ever care about representing British Columbia? Now, I've been talking a lot about what kind of a province I'd like this to be. I've been talking about the four corners of my family's first policy in British Columbia. Now, the first thing about families first is job creation. Because what do you need to be a good parent? What do you need to be able to support your family? It's a job. You need to be able to put money on the table. And I think we are food on the table. I, th I, think we need to, I think we need to make sure that more people can do that in British Columbia and that the people who can, can do more of it. Because we often talk like the economy is something in the abstract, and it is not. The economy exists so that you can support your family however you define that. The economy exists so that government can provide services that are important to all of us, like health care and education. We need to start connecting that economy to families across British Columbia. We need to close the urban-rural divide that exists when we talk about the economy so that people don't say we should shut down mines. People shouldn't say we want to stop the prosperity mine from going forward. That we should stop economic activity because it doesn't happen in my town. Every job in every region of British Columbia matters. And every job in rural British Columbia matters too. Because that's what puts food on the table for every one of us. gentlemen, I joined this party because I believe that we can win the next election. I believe we need to win the next election. We need to make sure that our coalition is strong and broad and wide and deep. Families cannot afford the New Democrats. And if we don't offer an alternative, they will. Thanks so much. years, my first five years of public life in opposition trying to chase the NDP out of power. And then when we got into government in 2001, I spent the next four years along with my colleagues, I was vice chair of treasury board, trying to clean up the colossal mess that they'd left for us. And we had to make some very tough decisions in that first period of this government. Those decisions, though, I think are what have set us on the great economic path that we're on today, despite one of the worst recessions uh, in history. I think we need to return to those prudent conservative principles for budgeting. I think we need to make sure that our budget is balanced by 2013, 2014. And if, if British Columbians can't count on BC Liberals to manage their money well, who can they manage, who can they count on to do that for them? For me, a balanced budget comes before sweeping tax cuts. It comes before big spending promises. It comes first. Because that's who we are as BC Liberals. As I said, if British Columbians can't count on us to manage their money well, they can't count on anyone. Thanks. No, sorry, Graham, is that me?
Yes. All right. Sorry about that. I didn't hear you. That's all right. <laughs> um, you, well, didn't, I was... you didn't always listen to me anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to dispute that. Oh, apparently no one did. <laughs> Um, I, in 2001, I was appointed Education Minister and Deputy Premier. And my first job when I took that on was to make sure that we expand the number of people who are engaged in our education system. When I got there, after 10 years of New Democrats, our education system was essentially a negotiation between government and the teachers union. That is not good enough. Parents deserve a say in education. Students deserve a stay in education. Principals and vice principals, community members deserve a say in education because we all benefit from the system. So I focused on trying to open up the system for all of the stakeholders. One of the things that I did, and it wasn't always easy, we got into plenty of fights with the people, the vested interests that were there, but it was worth it. One of the things that we got started on but I didn't finish was the changes to the College of Teachers, and I know that Margaret McDermott is proposing many of the changes that I brought forward. I absolutely support her in doing that. As Premier, I'd ask uh, our Education Minister to continue continue with that. And I also support standardized testing, and I'll tell you why. When I was education minister, we brought in something called accountability contracts. We asked schools to do better based on where they were. We asked them to set goals for improvement. You can't do that if you don't know where you are. And that's the value of standardized testing. Thanks. this issue in the last four and a half years of listening to people for a living at CKNW, I'll tell you, you don't, you sure, it sure changes your mind about how the justice system works when you talk to the Bod family who lost their parents to a street racer on the night coming back from their daughter's engagement party. Both of them were killed in that, and one of, and their, one of their daughters was gravely injured. Why? A street racer who'd been on the road, who'd already had multiple multiple uh, issues with the justice system for his driving. Why was he behind the wheel of a car? And what about Alexa Midlar's parents, who were only able to move the case forward against their daughter, or against their daughter's killer, a drunk on the road who knocked her down and killed her as she fed a horse by the side of the road in Delta. They were only able to bring that case to court after tremendous personal effort and sacrifice on their own, half, on their own behalf. This system does not work well enough, and we need to change it. We need to, as Mike DeYoung says, open up the courtroom to cameras. We need to do something about the length of uh, trials. Ontario's had a great experiment with shortening trials. We should look at that and see how we, what we can do. We need to put violent criminals, and we need to put repeat criminals in jail for longer. We need to close. <laughs> We need to close the revolving door of justice and get criminals off the street. Moira is right. The justice system only works when people have confidence in it. And the way it's working now doesn't exactly inspire that. Thank you, Christy. And a lot of us have talked today about how important it is that the government starts listening. I have spent the last four and a half years listening to British Columbians, and I've learned a lot about what listening needs to be. This next election could not be more important for the next generation of British Columbians. This government has done so much in these last decade to set us on the right track. We cannot afford that legacy that we have all worked for to fall into the hands of the NDP. But we have to fix the rest. We have to start listening harder. We have to start standing up for BC families. And we have to demonstrate to British Columbians that we are capable of real change. I'm talking about creating family supporting jobs across the province, about empowering people, about helping families feel safer in their communities, and making sure that they have the health care system they need. We have six great candidates in this race, and many of them have great ideas too. When we conclude this leadership process, we will all come together and bring those great ideas to the table. And we will all go out together, 
to beat the NDP in the next election. We can't afford to go backwards. British Columbia deserves another term of BC Liberal government. Thanks so much. Thank you, Christy.